Medicare Part B premiums going down next year. Going down, all due, be due to some questionable, shall we say. I'm not saying fraudulent. I'm not saying fraudulent. I'll leave that for others. I'm just saying questionable. Allegedly questionable. I'm not saying fraudulent, though. That's for other people to say. Alzheimer's research. This is, uh, trust the science, everybody. Just trust them because they're going to steer you right. So let's look at this by the fool. Good news for retirees. Lower Medicare Part B premiums could be coming down. All right. All right. CMS's Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services decision not to cover the Alzheimer's disease drug Aduhelm resulted in a big cost savings. These savings will be passed along to Medicare Part B beneficiaries in 2023. What's bad news for Biogen, it could be good news for you and me and other people as well. All right, so the premiums for Medicare jumped 14, Part B now, Part B, 14.5% in 2022. Hmm, why though? You might wonder uh, why. <laughs> I just, I laugh at this because they're so corrupt. We need to understand why they jumped so much in 2022 to begin with. Well, they identified several reasons. The one that got the most attention, though, was the agency anticipated potentially significant cost increases relative to Biogen's Alzheimer's disease drug, Aduhelm. Do you remember when we talked about this in the live stream last Sunday? That's why you got to stay, or maybe two, yeah, last Sunday. That's why you got to stay here. Maybe it's even Wednesday's live stream, last Wednesday. You got to stay with me on live streams, man. This is where we identify the corruption that's out there. Biogen won USDA approval for Aduhelm in June of 2021. Yay, the USDA, or FDA, I should say, FDA. Yay, if they're approving, it means it's legit. Merck, Vioxx, legit. The biotech company set an initial price tag for 56000 a pill. 56000 Six and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's, so Biogen was going to get 56000 per pill. Did Biogen get R&D from the United States government? At some point, you know they did. The increased cost of CMS to pay for Aduhelm would have been enormous and passed down to us, of course. Finn. However, the wheels fell off for Aduhelm. In April, 20, Aduhelm, in April 2022, CMS said it was effectively limiting coverage for Medicare patients and authorized clinical trials only. Less than a month later, Biogen slashes sales efforts, all but regulating it to the trash heap of the U.S. So what the hell was that? It was just approved last year, and then a year later, it's like going to the trash heap? Or I wonder if that in those, we're going to talk about why, what caused this. Don't pop the corks in the champagne bottles just yet. There's still a big unanswered question whether Part B will actually be lower in 2023 than in 2022. We don't know, but... The fact that Biogen and Aduhelm was being sent to the trash heap of history is good. All right, so let's talk about what actually caused that uh, Aduhelm thing. This is from the Daily Cause. I, I, look, I can't stand these libs, but this is a great piece of research. Two decades of Alzheimer's research may be based on deliberate fraud that has cost millions of lives. So we're just going to type in Aduhelm. Oh, my goodness. Last year, the FDA narrowly, this is 2021, we just talked about, narrowly approved Aduhem, a new drug from Biogen that the company has priced so highly is expected to drive up the price of Medicare for everyone in America, even those who don't use it. It was the first drug to be approved that fights the accumulate, a, accumulation of amyloid plaques in the brain. What makes the approval of the 56,000 a dose drug so controversial is that when it does decrease plaques, it doesn't actually slow Alzheimer's. In fact, clinical trials were suspended in 2019 after the treatment showed no clinical benefits. But why did the FDA approve it? Uh, let's see. Could anyone from Biogen on Biogen's board in FDA, could there be some elevate or some uh, crossing there where they're going, taking off the, the FDA suit and going to Biogen? Uh, does that mind you know, Scott Gottlieb, Pfizer, and others? Yeah. Uh. What, all right, so, of course, the suspension of the clinical trials did not keep Biogen from seeking the drug's approval and pricing it astronomically. Hmm, let's take a look. The suspicion that something was more than a little wrong with the model is getting all, uh, uh, the suspicion that something was more than a little wrong with the model that is getting almost all the Alzheimer's research began last year with a fight over the drug Simuflam. The drug was being pushed into trials by this manufacturer, Cassava Sciences, but a group of scientists who reviewed the drug maker's claims about it believed it was exaggerating the potential. Hmm. As science reports, it was the investigator from Vanderbilt University, this guy, Matthew Schrag, who's our hero, 
who tipped over the whole apparent apple core to discover it wasn't just cassava's drug that's ineffective. It's good evidence that the last 16 years, almost everyone has had the wrong idea about the cause of Alzheimer's to begin with because of fraud. In 2006, Nate, and I, look, I'm just reading from Daily Cost, so sue them. I'm not saying it's a fraud. I'm saying it's allegedly. I don't know. It might be legit. Who knows? In 2006, Nature published a paper, a specific amyloid B protein assembly in the brain impairs memory. And using a series of studies in mice, the paper concluded that the memory deficits in middle-aged mice might cause, uh, were attributed to accumulations of a soluble substance called AB56. Right, I'm not going to go into it. The study didn't come out of nowhere. It only seems to confirm one of the several hypotheses about Alzheimer's has been circling around for many years. After all, the brains of Alzheimer's patients do contain plaques that sometimes seriously alter the structure of the brain. Those plaques do contain amyloids. Yeah. The 2006 paper was primarily authored by neuroscience Sylvain Lesney and given more weight by the name of well-respected neuroscience named Karen Ash, both from the University of Minnesota. Hey, where everyone's favorite food scientist Ansel Keys come from. <laughs> oh, boy. The results of the study seem to demonstrate the amyloids to Alzheimer's pipeline with a clarity that even the most casual reader can understand. And it became one of the most influential, if not the most influential, papers in all of Alzheimer's research. Not only has it been cited hundreds of times, <laughs> but there are now 130 Alzheimer's drugs now working their way through trials, which 100 are directly designed to attack the amyloids featured in the paper. What intrigued Schrag, our good guy, when he came back to the seminal work were the images. Images in the paper that were supposed to show the relationship between memory issues and the presence of AB56 appeared to have been altered. Some of them appear to be pierced together, pierced to pieced together from multiple images, kind of like the blue marble from NASA. But no, how dare you question the science of NASA? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. How dare you question the science on vegan diet? Shrag shied away. This is a good guy because he's a humble guy at the University of Vanderbilt from a, uh, actually accusing the foundational paper of being a fraud, but it definitely raised red flags. Now science has concluded its own six-month review, and I'll link here. They concurred with the overall conclusions, which cast doubt on hundreds of images, including more than 70 in Lesney's papers. Some look like shockingly blatant examples of image tampering, tampering says an Alzheimer's expert at the University of Kentucky. <laughs> In the face of unearthing potential fraud, it's not, as, it's not as if the world has changed overnight. Four months after Schrag submitted his concerns to the NIH, the NIH turned around and awarded Leslie a five-year grant to study doo -doo 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 -doo, Alzheimer's. That grant was awarded by Austin Yang, program director for the NIH. I'm sure there's no uh, affiliation there. Oh, no! Yang also happens to be the co-author of one of <laughs> the paper in 2006. <laughs> Dude, you're trusting these people? What's wrong with you, man? Don't trust any of these clowns. Science has carefully detailed the work done on the analysis of the image. Other researchers, including a 2008 paper from Harvard, have noted AB56 is unstable. There seems to be no sign of this substance in human tissues, making its targeting literally worse than useless. However, Lesney claims to have a method for measuring this and other oligomers and brain cells that serve as the basis for other papers, which are all now in doubt. Uh, there seems to be no doubt that uh, oligomers, all, whatever the hell, is playing a role cognitive impairment. However, that might not be as direct as noted before. It seems likely that for the last 16 years, more research on Alzheimer's and most new drugs entering trials have been based on a paper at best modified the results of his findings to make them appear more conclusive. Yeah. And again, I, the science article is fantastic, too, if you just want to look at that. It's just it's completely suspect, the whole thing. And that right there, here's our guy, Blots in the Field. A neuroscience, neuroscience image sleuth finds signs of fabrication in scores of Alzheimer's articles. Threatening a reigning theory of the disease. Let's look at old Lesney, huh? And let's not let Karen, oh, Sylvan Lesney. His work underpins a key element of a dominant yet controversial amyloid hypothesis of Alzheimer's, which holds that AB clumps, oh, all right. Uh, Lesney and his colleagues discovered... Uh, a, B, amyloid, but Shroud's doubt, if Shroud's doubts are correct, Lessing's findings were an elaborate mirage. Yeah. Let's look at, uh, let's see. 
I want to show you just this one thing right here. We're going to show you just a little bullet point. The immediate obvious damage is wasted NIH funding and wasted thinking in the field because people are using these results as a starting point for their own experiment. Let's look at old Yang, shall we? I just, this whole thing is so freaking corrupt, dudes. The NIH program officer for the grant that gave Leslie the money after our hero may say, wait a second, NIH. Remember Francis Collins, NIH, he's not corrupt, but he's a Christian, Josh. Yeah, Christians are corrupt too, by the way. <laughs> Just look at how many freaking Catholic priests are doing bad things to little children. Austin Yang, co-author on the 2006 paper, granted Leslie the money <laughs> to do the research. I think it's five million or something like that. Five years of support. In 2021, Schrag, our hero, visited PubPeer, a website where scientists flag possible errors in published papers, peer-reviewed. Many of the site's posts come from technical gumshoes who deconstruct Western blots for telltale marks and indicating the bands representing proteins could have been removed or inserted where they don't belong. Uh, the journal Neuroscience caught Schrag's eye. They questioned the authenticity of blots to use to differentiate the proteins in mouse brain tissues, but, but you can read it. It's fantastic. But anyway, let's go down to Karen Ash because... Uh, She's a she's a great character here, and uh, I think it's Karen Ash, right? Let's do ASC. Yeah, Karen Ash, shocking. It emerged from the lab of Minnesota physicist, physician, and neuroscience Karen Ash, who had already made a remarkable series of discoveries. As a medical resident, resident, uh, she contributed to the Nobel laureate Stanley. Prusner's pioneering work on prions, infectious proteins that cause blah, blah, blah. In 1990, she created a transgenic mouse that turns out human ABs, AB globes, whatever they'll call which forms plaques in the animal brain. By 2000, 2000 we talked about all gummers, and the brains of Ash's transgenic mice, all right, let's just keep reading. The 2006 paper's first author, sometimes credited as, was Lesney. A young scientist, Ash had hired straight out of a PhD program from France. What? Ash touted AB56 on her website as the first substance ever identified in brain tissue and Alzheimer's research that has been shown to cause memory impairment. Less than two weeks later, after the paper was published, Ash won the prestige in Potemkin. I call it Potemkin, actually, but how ironic. Potemkin Prize for Neuroscience. Partly for her work on this, or Potemkin Village is old, uh, this paper here. The Nature paper had been cited about 2,300 times, more than all but four other Alzheimer's basic research public since 2006. So basically everything's focused on this. I bet uh, Karen Ash is no different than Huxley, no different than Ansel Keys, no different than Michael Mann. Bulldogs, I bet. Uh, since then, annual NIH support for studies labeled amyloid, oligomer, and Alzheimer's has risen from near zero to almost 300 million in 2021. With Lesney and Ash have sparked the explosion. Here's our guy here. I'm sure he's living large, man. I'm sure he's living large. But University of Minnesota is going to investigate, by the way. As Ash's star burned more brightly, and Lesney's rose too. I'm sure I'm pronouncing the name wrong. I don't care. He joined UMN. With his own NIH funded lab in 2009, making bank, I'm sure. Megan Larson, who worked as a junior scientist, is now a product manager at Biotechnia, a biosciences supply company. Calls him passionate, hardworking, and charismatic. And there he's handsome, too. He's charismatic. Leslie prepared all the images for publication. He became a leader of Minnesota's neuroscience graduate program in 2020. <laughs> in 2022, four months after Schrag, our good guy, delivered his concerns to NIH, he received a coveted R01 grant from the agency with up to five years of support. The NIH program declined to comment. Such a clown show. Such a clown show. Uh, science has two independent imaging analysts, Bick and Jana Christopher, to review Schrag's findings about the papers and others by Leslie, and they say, they say some supposed manipulation might be a digital artifact that can be occur inadvertently during image processing, a possibility Shrag concedes, concedes, but Bilk or Bick found his conclusions compelling and sound. Christopher con concurred about the many duplicated images and some markings suggested cut and pasted Western blocks fly by Shrag. Blots. She also identified additional dubious blots and backgrounds, backgrounds he had missed. 
In the 16 years following, Leslie and Ash separately or jointly published many articles on their stellar oligomar. Citing the ongoing UM review of Lessing's work, Ash declined via email to be interviewed or answer questions. And of course, University of Minnesota is going to investigate too. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One exception. All right, see. But even for Schrag's investigation, the spotty evidence that uh, what AB plays a role in Alzheimer's had raised eyebrows. Some guy long doubted studies that claim to use purified AB56. Multiple types can be pre present in a sample even after purification efforts, making it hard to say any cognitive effects were due to AB56 alone. In fact, Wilcock, I guess a chick, and others say several labs have tried and failed to find AB56. They try to replicate it. Ah, science is supposed to replicate. An exception is Harvard, a leading advocate of the amyl amyloid and toxic ol oligomer hypothesis who has cited the Nature paper at least 13 times. Uh, this guy cited, examined Schrag's dossier on Les's paper and says he finds it credible and well-supported. He did not see manipulation in every suspect, but he says there are certainly at least 12 or 15 images where I agree there's no other explanation than if manipulation. Yeah. All right, so anyway, University of Minnesota is going to investigate just like Penn State investigated Michael Mann with Climate Gate and, of course, Penn State, which got all kinds of money for climate science from NIH and the National Science Foundation turned around and found Michael Mann innocent of all charges. How ironic. Same thing's got to be. Yeah. Right. So there you go. There's your Medicare story for 2022. Good times and uh, trust the science. We'll see you.